All right, welcome everybody out. Tonight's topic is how to develop confidence in regards to doing your doTERRA business. Yeah. So we've had a lot, we've worked with a lot of people over the many years um, since um, Jade started doing this business and, and a lot of people have expressed the concern, you know, I don't feel confident enough to teach or do this or that. So that's the concern that we're going to talk about tonight. And you're going to see a lot of uh, team members uh, that will say that too. Mm. Has yeah. anybody heard that? Um, anybody, or maybe you feel, don't feel, or maybe you feel you'd like to have more confidence. You've heard that before? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes people look like they're, they're natural. Like, how did they get that confident? How can they just speak? And you're thinking, oh, I wish I was like that. Um, so, anyways, I discovered a few things and I uh, just want to share with you what I discovered uh, so that you can develop that confidence too. Uh, we have this in a post. So, we'll share this post. You want to share that? Yeah, sure. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Hello, we had a we have a new person. Hey, Lucy. Can everybody see that? All right. <laughs> yep. Okay. So if we're going to talk about um, these six things. We're going to talk about focusing on others, um, and then starting with what you know. Then we're going to talk about implementing. Um, let's see. I'm going to move this over here so I can. Look at um, <laughs> make and implement a plan to learn more um, and start with those that love you. Practice, you know, we teach more, the more we teach, the, the better we are, of course. And we'll talk about uh, work within your instructional level. All right. And everybody's welcome to jump in and share and discuss because I don't want to be just talking here. Um, but I, I understand some of you are having dinner and things, so <laughs> you don't have to but jump in if you don't want to. So these are these are the um, six areas that um, Jade and I discussed. These uh, help people have more confidence when they're either teaching classes or talking to people or just you know working in their doTERRA business. So we're going to go through each one of these and um, yeah. Alrighty. The first is focusing on others. Okay, so. I have this cute little picture because it feels like that when I help people, I just go out and um, they're my friends and they just want to help them and you serve them with all your heart and if they're your friends and even if you've just met them, I try to connect with people and then um, when I do that, um, you know, I forget about me, I forget about myself and then I actually am able to fully help them without uh, worrying about me. Um, and I really understand the, the saying, you know, you, you lose yourself, um, you find yourself when you lose yourself, okay? That's, uh, that really makes sense to me now. Um, so you serve others with all your heart, and when you lose yourself in loving service, you'll find yourself. Okay, so I used to be worried about, oh, I don't know if what people might think of me. Um, and then that fear will it paralyzes you and you don't go anywhere. And I've met lots of people that have been in doTERRA for a long, long time and they still haven't shared the oils with people because they're like, well, nobody's interested. That's their excuse. But, you know, I think, well, I th maybe it's something else deep down inside. It's a fear. And, you know, it's a fear of what people think of you. So what I, what I would do is um, when I feel that fear, I say burn Jade on the altar or burn Jade's ego on the altar. And remember, ego stands for, you know, edging God out, right? Uh, so if I let that go um, and I pray, what can I do as an instrument in God's hands for this person? I just look at that person and whatever I have in here, whatever I have, I don't, might not have too much in there, but I will want to just give them what I've got. And so you concentrate on that person and suddenly you're out of your way. And that's really cool. Um, that's the easiest and fastest way for me to uh, feel confident because it's not about me. Okay. Uh, everyone deserves a chance to know about their oils. So if you think about it, uh, what if you were introduced to the essential oils? 
you know, how sad would that be if you, if you have no essential oils in your life today, right? I, I thought about it this afternoon. I'm like, no way. Life would be so different. The last six years, we haven't taken our kids to the doctors and the peace and the joy and the changes it's, uh, it's created in our home, is, that is just invaluable. Uh, it's given us an opportunity for my husband and I to work together. And you know, <laughs> this morning we just got up and helped the kids and, just, and I had a kind of a slow day and we just thought, you know, we, we just felt so humbled and moved because we get to have this life. And that was because we shared the oils with people. Um, so anyways, um, you know, what right do we have to deny other people of the same blessings? You know, just because we have this lack of self-love. And I think about that, I think, no, <laughs> get over yourself, Jade. <laughs> and then move forward. So how to stop worrying about what others think. Okay. We can um, invite God's love into our life. He, he loves us anyways, but we have to open ourselves up to receive it. And when we stop this self-criticism, um, you know, we no longer broadcast to others to criticize us. And it's, it's like magic, right? You stop saying mean things about yourself. Oh, you know, I sounded stupid or whatever it is. Then people don't, you don't feel that and see that in people. It's amazing. It's magic, right? And how do we uh, feel God's love? It's very simple. Just allow him in. Pray to him. You know, you can use frankincense and sandalwood and, you know, just allow yourself to be loved. Um, and that is really simple. Sometimes we overthink it and make it difficult, but it's not that difficult. Okay, so when I feel God's love for me, I have so much love to give other people. You know, and you can't contain it all because it's just so much. And, you know, that's how we develop a Christ-like or God-like love. That's what we want to do in this life, right? We develop that ability. All right. So does anybody want to say anything? Add anything to it? Does that make sense? Yeah, just agree. <laughs> yeah. It's much easier, isn't it? Just then think, oh, be positive or be confident. I was nervous when I first was having friends over to share the oils with them or when I went to uh, my sister-in-law's to like teach a class. I was nervous before, but once they walked in or once I got there and they got there, I was like, oh, these are my friends and like, you know, it's okay. And there was a couple people I didn't know. So I focused on, well, I, what are you, are you a mom? Are you this? How do you know people? And it just made all that just fade away because I'm really good at making friends. So I just did that. And then I was like, oh, and then, you know, let me share the oils with you. And it just happened naturally. So everybody was like, wow, you're so good at that. And when I left the next day, the next day they were telling me this, like, oh, how long have you, you've been so good. And then I was just like, no, that's like the biggest class I've ever had. I was, some small ones with like two or three friends and they're like really and I said well I just worried about you guys and every time you would ask about an oil or I'd show or pass it around like it just all faded away because we were enjoying the oils and everybody's like "Ooh, that smells yummy oh I feel that working or whatever and it just made you forget and have fun so it's easier if you're having fun with friends or people <laughs> Awesome. That's Thank good, you, yeah. Stacy. Yeah, exactly. If you you just did exactly that. Just forget about yourself and really focus on getting to know people, seeing what you can do for them. It doesn't matter how much you know or you don't know. Just kind of help out as much as you can. Um, Emily Wright, the uh, one of the DoTerra owners, last convention, she um, she said to uh, one of the consultants, she said, "Don't be selfish." Because one of the consultants, she hit um, a silver rank and she's like, oh, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the income. I think I'm done now. And she said, don't be selfish. <laughs> um, because, you know, you can't keep this just, you know, for, to yourself. You, you want to share it because people need it, right? So that's the, 
that's the thing that I keep thinking about. I'm like, that's right. If I'm thinking about myself or worrying about what people think of me, that's being selfish. Yes, yeah, so I need to get out of my own way. And um, I have been able to do things that I never knew I could do because I let God show me that I can do it and I let him take over. And I sometimes say, I'll open my mouth and can you speak through me? Because sometimes I don't know what I am doing. I don't know their problems either. And it's like magic. You know, sometimes I say things I'm thinking, I hope that was right. And people come up to me later on and said, oh my gosh, you know, that was amazing. And I said, oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> but really, you know, when you just focus on them at the moment, things come out of your mouth and you think, oh, okay. Um, so anytime I get nervous, I think, oh, am I thinking about me again? You know, no, I'm going to practice loving people. You know, if I'm not, if I'm trying to love people, I'm not, you know, I shouldn't be hiding. I can't hide. So that's the, the first thing that we want to talk about. Just, um, you know, focusing on people. Okay. And I have a few oils to suggestion here. Wintergreen, lavender, and pettigrain. Okay. Wintergreen is about uh, surrender. So just surrender to the situation, to God, and you'll find that um, you're able to do more than you, th you think you can. And lavender is about communication. Okay, just open up your mouth and you're, you're able to freely communicate. And then pentagrain uh, helps you release negative family patterns. So sometimes we have a pattern of self-criticism, um, <laughs> and self-abuse really and you know you can actually stop that stop that from perpetuating okay it's just a habit yeah all right so those are the three oils anybody want to say anything before we move on to the next thing i, I was just going to add um to what i'm sorry i, I can't remember the name Stacey? Yeah, was saying before about the classes and, and once you get talking, even the ones that are like you can tell they're there, but I'm, I'm not going to spend my, I'm not interested, don't want to buy anything. As soon as you start using the oils, you can literally watch their whole demeanour change totally. And at the end, they're like, can't get enough. <laughs> it's, they do the work. So you don't even have to get worried. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I agree. So get the oils in their hands as soon as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And the next thing we want to talk about to help build confidence is to start uh, with what you know. Um, share with people what you know. Okay. So just where, whatever stage you are at, just start there and share with them what little you know. Because even though it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more than they know because they don't know anything about oils. And, and this addresses the, the concern that we see a lot of people have, you know, they come into the world of essential oils and they see, oh, there's so many oils, there's so much to learn, so many ailments, so much, mm -hmm. uh, you can't learn it all. I don't yeah. feel like you need to learn it all. You know about essential oils and three ways to use them. That's what people don't know. So I'll just start with that. If you, if you know the contents of an introductory class, introduction class, that's good enough. And you can know where to send people for information or where to find more information yourself. That's, that's enough. That's more than, you know, 80, 90% of people know. Yeah. And I want to tell you guys that I think I became silver or gold rank before I actually saw somebody teach a class. I was really, I was pathetic when I taught. I told people all the time that I had a, a box of oils in the middle and the modern essential book. And that's all I had. No enrollment forms, no price lists, nothing, because I didn't even know those things existed. So I just had everyone sit around and just smell oils. And what does it do? Well, I do this with that one. I do this with that one. And I don't know what else. You look it up. Look it up in the book. And I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, a lot of people, they now start with a lot of tools. And, um, you know, you're ahead of me in the game when I started, but I, I felt really strongly that people needed this anyways. And I felt really inspired that God wants me to share this. And I just did. I, it was really pathetic, but um, you know, you get out of your own way because you want to be obedient. <laughs> yeah, do it. Right? 
So it, the other thing that helps is be clear on your objective. Really, your objective is to share the hope of essential oils. Because right yeah. here and now, today, as they smell the oils, as they practice using it with you, they haven't healed or they haven't changed in any way. Um, you know, maybe a little bit, so like Lucy was saying, hey, their demeanor changes a bit and they think, oh, that's amazing. But really at the end of it all, you are sharing the hope. Okay, the hope that these oils can help them be healthier somehow, if they continue using it, if they buy some, if they um, use it on their family members or whatever, that uh, it will give them relief. So the easiest thing to do is share your story with them, okay? You, you know your story, you know where you're at and you just testify. Um, people can't tell you what you can or cannot believe. So I believe that this was what helped me with my respiratory problems. I was using it and then it just cleared up. So this is what I wanna share with you, <clears throat> right? And you know, people can't say, well, that's wrong. Right? And so you share with people your story and your experiences and just tell them, wow, I don't know too much. Um, I'm still learning, and, but uh, this is what I know. And then a lot of people, when if they're intelligent, they'll just take what you give them and they run off with that information and they'll dig into more resources. And it's, it's been beautiful. Our upline, a um, few people up, she used to say, I just act dumb. <laughs> I just act dumb. And I thought, okay, yeah, what does that mean? She's like, well, if I act too smart, they rely on me. They keep calling me. So <laughs> I thought, that's good. Well, you know, that's interesting. So anyways, um, you know, <laughs> being a teacher, I, I'm, I'm a different person and I love learning. Um, and I share with people what I know, but it's really, I tried really hard to, to get people to understand the skills and the main principles and then encourage them to take over their, their health, be responsible for their health. And, and sometimes, you know, um, coming across as a know-it-all, mm -hmm. you use big words and you're like this uh, high expert that no one can reach it actually can come back to hurt you because you also want other people to join you in sharing with other people. And if they think that they have to develop all that knowledge, then they're going to not want to share essential oils because they, they don't think that they will be able to measure up. Yeah. So um, sometimes being the expert can actually hurt your prospects of mm -hmm. growing your business. And you also have to help people, you know, just the basics. If they know, how to look it up, you know, like someone maybe asks you, well, what essential oils do I use for such and such? And you say, I have a few ideas, but let's look it up. And you look it up and, and they see like, oh, you know, you don't know everything. Um, you can post it on the, you know, Facebook group or something. So, so actually not being an expert is, can be a very good thing for your business. Yeah. But then, you know, as you um, help people learn, you have your wellness classes and you can teach them more details in the wellness class too. And become yeah. more smart. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hold back a lot. Um, you know, it sounds like I know a lot, but I hold back a lot when I teach an introductory class. Um, I just tell people the bare minimum of what I think that they sh should know for today. And, um, but the main idea is to get them to have hope in these oils, that these are potentially something that uh, will help them change their lives. At the end of the day, you are not responsible for their health. That's the other thing that pressures people. So you want to know exactly the right oils to share with them because otherwise, you know, they're not going to heal and then they're not going to believe. Uh, that's uh, just a limiting um, belief. All you have to do is say, look, this has helped me in this area. And hopefully they connect, you know, A to B and say, well, if that helps her with that, maybe something here will help me with my problems. Um, you do your very best and you get better at it. Uh, you know, I feel like my um, conversion rate is very high um, compared to how I used to be because I just know what oils to use for people now. And of course, the more knowledge you have, the, the better you become. Um, but that doesn't stop you from starting where you're at now. 
Um, but remember, again, that you are not responsible for their healing because they can buy those oils and go home and leave them on the shelf and turn around and say, hey, it didn't work. And of course, it didn't work. You didn't open it, right? And, I, you know, my friend's father was the most the typical um, story. He gave her back her deep blue rub. He's like, no, nah, it didn't work. And she's like, oh, dad, you know, and then she opens it and the seal was still on. <laughs> Uh-huh. Dead giveaway. I know. Like, what? How can you say that to to me? Anyway, she said, Jade, I squeezed it into a different container. And then when he complained about his aches and pains, I rubbed it on. And he's all, oh, that feels good. What was that? Can you get me some of that? And she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you're not responsible for their, their health and healing. So we don't want to rob people of the opportunity and the satisfaction of healing themselves. We say, well, I have an idea. You know, you might want to use this and this and this, or you can look it up. Um, some of these are the skills and the principles that I know. Um, but here, you do it. And when they have that healing experience, and they call you up and say, hey, thanks, Jade. Hey, thanks, Lucy, whatever. You say, well, you did it yourself, right? You did it yourself. I didn't do it. And then that gives them the confidence to, to know that, hey, I did. You know, you just suggested it, but I used it, and I felt better. Um, that's what you do you start with what you know um, and remember not to feel responsible for their health okay and especially share oils does anybody have any experiences Shit. with that when you first started um, I, Beth, Beth really hadn't joined that long ago when I went go teach a class for her and I didn't, I knew that she had gotten like the family kit thing, but I didn't realize how much she had started using it. And it began because they were over and her daughter was sick and I gave her on guard. And then after I went to their house and they had a sore throat and I had my little keychain and I said, well, here, try lavender on there. And that was all I did. And she was like, well, I need to, I need to buy this stuff. And what was weird was the Christmas before I had bought her a diffuser, but it was before I even knew about doTERRA. So ever, then I went to her house to teach a class and it was just a couple weeks after she joined and I get there and I start teaching and she's got diffusers all over like that she she bought one for every room and then she had two in the living room and then I get there and her son is like oh you got to try this one I had a stomach ache and I put digestin on and like that it stopped hurting I was all better oh and I had a headache one time and we put this on there and then lavender helps with my sore throat and like they had so many of their own family stories while I was teaching that I was like, I can't believe how much they've used in the short time. But I was just amazed. And yeah. that Yeah. Yeah, and that the twelve year old was able to tell everybody else, his grandma and friends like of his mom, what to do. He was like, Wait, 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 no, 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 no. This helps with that. And I was like, Yeah, if it, it, it might, let's look in the book. I, I know some of them. I don't know all of them and they were like okay where's the book let's look it up for that and they all had fun looking it up and so it kind of just was like y'all can do it and everybody started looking up things and smelling and trying like on their neck or whatever so but it was amazing that that short a time it showed me like well they just bought it they didn't let it sit they knew like well let's see what it helps with she got the app on her phone and she was like well I want to buy the book because I only saw on my phone but I would like to have the book too so, you know, it was just rolling and like, wow, it, it kind of took me aback, but that was, it was good, you know? So. Excellent. Fantastic. Mm. Has anybody had an, the opposite of that experience where you're teaching a class and, and you feel like you don't know enough to answer people's questions? Mm. Doesn't happen very often, yet everybody's scared no. of that. <laughs> because you do, you just go to the book if you don't know, and then we all discover together. So it's yeah. like you've got the resources there. Yeah. And then if I'm ever stuck with something that I think, oh, that's, that's a bit deep, I always say I've got a really good person that I can just contact at any time and get information so I can help you, you know. Yeah. And then people accept that. That's yeah. fine. I'll get back to you on that. That's yeah. a good question. The yeah. only the only circumstance where people may not accept that is when you have maybe a heckler or someone in the crowd who is yeah. not ready to um, 
30 yeah. bucks. I haven't had one of those yet, thank goodness. <laughs> it, it can happen, and usually yeah. they come to an essential oil class. And if, if you feel like you have to pull out research and <laughs> you know, somehow prove things, that person's not ready to hear what you have to say. And you say, look, I, I'm, I'd love to share about essential oils when you're ready. Um, yeah. um, you know, I have some more to yeah. tell you. Yep, I, I agree with Ben. Just don't entertain them and don't let yeah. them take over the class. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And the way to do that is, you know, I have a really good answer for that. And that's outside the scope of our class. Would you mind staying after for a few minutes? Because I'd like to explain it to you in, in a way that I know, I know you would understand. Mm -hmm. That gets you back staying on the track of the class instead of off this a tangent talking about some science <laughs> jargon and everything. More often than not, they forget because they weren't looking for an answer, anyways. Yeah. So, but it keeps you just want to be validated. A lot of times, people come mm -hmm. up to me and say, "I've been using essential oil for twenty years," and mm -hmm. I go, "Ooh," and I validate them, and that's all they needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they just have an inner need to feel important. Make them important. There's, the world is abundant. Importance yeah. for everybody. Yeah. I say, oh, that's great. You can help me with the class then. Yeah. yeah. And then they come to me and go, I didn't know we could do that and that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So everybody can see there's not much you need to know. And, and a lot of what people fear and what holds them back from being confident is really doesn't exist. Yeah. One thing to do um, if you are nervous, uh, use balance oil, helps with the stress and anxiety, and cardamom. Cardamom is the oil of objectivity. It helps you be objective and see the situation for what it is from a spectator's point of view and um, you know, not to get too caught up in it. Okay. Yeah. So on to point number three, I guess. Okay, yep. So remember that one. Uh, the second point was start uh, with what you know and just focus in on helping people feel the, the hope of what they can get from the essential oils. So you don't have to feed them and, yeah, give them more information. And if you do have the problem of, you know, you don't know enough, that's mm -hmm. point number three. Plan to learn more. Mm -hmm. they're, they're like everybody here tonight is doing that yeah good <laughs> we're on meeting you everyone. together we're talking about the oils uh, well the business in this uh, sense but mm -hmm. you know there are there's so much material out there it's too much really yes. there's just too much out there to yeah. soak up all at once mm -hmm. so you just have to make a plan uh, where you want to get your information um, whether it's staying up at night under your covers reading the modern <laughs> essentials book Hey! <laughs> <laughs> or whether it's listening to the podcast or, or whatever, um, make a plan and learn as much as you can. And don't take, don't feel overwhelmed. Don't do, do it all at once. Just a little bit um, on a regular basis. Yeah. So, what should I learn, and where should I learn? So, the first thing is what. It's easy because learn what you need for your family and for your own health. <laughs> <Thank you>. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's true. Um, the information that you learn, if it's applicable, you'll you'll keep it longer. So if you learn abstract um, ideas about how is you know what the name of um, this certain essential oil compound is, it may not be helpful to you. But if you know, like, oh, if I apply this certain oil on this big toe, it'll do this. <laughs> But for your health because then you set an example for other people but what happens is people with your same problems will come to you it's amazing how the universe works um yeah as a mom i have these concerns and then suddenly oh ben <laughs> your turn <laughs> a puzzle over done. <laughs> our daughter used his bum um so we have all of this knowledge you know, on our website, but then that's accumulation of the things that I've learned. Um, I, I get, when I first started doTERRA, I just wanted to take care of my health. I wanted my back to heal. You know, I wanted to get rid of my asthma, my allergies, you know, all the atherotic um, problems I had and depression. And look, I found friends that had the same problems. 
<laughs> and I thought, oh, what, what are the chances? And hey, I know exactly what to do for you. Um, and then, you know, that's where you start and people come to you um, that have similar problems and then you have other problems that, that come up. And that's where we get our content because people say, hey, I've got diabetes, I've got all these things and I go, hmm, I'm going to research that because now it's relevant and I share with, what pe with um, people what I know and then that uh, knowledge base builds. Um, but I and we get stories from people's experience. Yeah, and I collect yeah. stories and, yeah, and I, I dig into it and I ask people more information. How did you use it? How did you do that? You know, that's fantastic. And then I remember their stories to share with the next person. Um, so you have to um, give yourself an opportunity to learn. I signed up for a lot of um, conventions and um, summits because, you know, it was a sacrifice for our family, but I felt like, you know, it's my health. I really need to invest in myself. Now, I find that um, the team members that are humble and teachable, they not only learn very quickly about what essential oils to use, but also, um, you know, they learn how to share and do the business very quickly. And there's times when I feel really constrained um, to, to speak to some team members because they're not open to change. They're very resistant to change. And you, you know what I mean. You've seen those people um, because they're so fearful of rejection or failure. Um, so, and you know what, they, when they put that wall up, when they shut down and they switch off, we really can't do much um, and, and share information with them. So sometimes I go a roundabout kind of way, posting it online a little bit and hoping that they watch it and read it. Um, but anyways, if they are using the oils, the good news is the oils are going to help them change anyways, um, whether, you know, we like it or not. <laughs> and that's brilliant. Um, you yeah, know, that's, that's the nature of the oils because the, the healthy, positive vibration help them change. Um, my, one of my friends, her, her husband has um, MS and um, she, she used the oils and it kind of diffused it all over the place and just kind of helped him and then he, he really changed. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was much better than he was before and he, he wasn't conscious of that change but he did change. That was good, and, and we continue to change. Of course, if we're conscious of it, we can help that change um, to be quicker. Okay, um, now if you want to, an oil to help us be humble and um, teachable is oregano or oregano for the Aussies um, and thyme oil. Okay, so oregano and thyme, and you can put that on the bottom of your feet or smell it um, or take it internally. So time is just about releasing, releasing the anger, rage, and just old stuff. Okay, oregano is about humility. Alrighty. Um, so I, I planned, when I first joined doTERRA, I planned on um, doing a lot of learning during the kids' nap time and when people go to bed, I stay up late and I'll write notes and I learn. But, you know, it's a skill that we, we all need. And once you learn that, that it's, it's part of you for life. You've got that skill um, and you don't lose it. So that time that you invest in learning, it's well worth it. So what are your favorite ways of learning more about essential oils or the business or both? I think on your website. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, Getting on here uh, was really a key to me taking things in. And even though I can go and print the PDF, I usually write my own notes because I'm, I'm hearing it and then I'm writing it and I'm, I'm taking it in a couple different ways. And usually um, I look at, I look at um, the time frame of what you're going to be teaching and I try to get those oils. Like if I don't have them, I try to get them so that when the class comes, I can immediately start applying it because then I'll be like, oh, okay, this, you know, and it just helps to remember when somebody brings it up. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure that that was cedar. Yeah, yeah, we, we, I learned that cedar would help or cypress will help with this, you know, and it's because I remembered it from doing it a couple different ways or even listening to it again later. And then I post on my page um, after I've heard it and then I've used it for a while um then i i feel like i have it in and then i go and i share that post on my page so that i'm just refreshing it again but i think 
that the big key was getting on the meetings where I could hear others' questions and feel a part of the team and just learn from you guys with everything that you have to share. It's much different being with other people learning for some reason. Yeah, so <laughs> it's uplifting because everybody's in the same boat and we're all trying to accomplish what you have and, and be better at it. So it's good when we're all together and share ideas and stuff, you know? That's great. Excellent. Really good. Uh, multi-sensory that's what you're doing writing and then you're feeling yeah. inspiration and writing that down too and um you know you've got the oils to smell i mean that's solidifying that knowledge and then you turn around and teach it with <laughs> sharing it that's brilliant because then then yeah. you realize you're learning uh, time is maximized and you don't forget <laughs> that's excellent anybody else have anything they want to share on this topic before we go on to the next what are your favorite ways to learn about essential oils Pretty well summed it up. It's the same for me. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend, she drives to work and she listens to the podcast over and over. And she said that's how she remembers things. Um, yeah. my, so I do that. I used to listen to conference calls um, and while I wash dishes and I replay it <laughs> or when I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that for me personally, it's been very useful to go ahead and listen to the podcast. And even like, mm -hmm. um, I've gotten like the um, essential oils with the emotions on CD. And so I've listened to that in the car too. Um, because I know if I do it at home, it's going to take a lot of time away from my kids. So I do it when I'm in the car, like on my own. So mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to have like that me time. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. I've actually done it in the grocery store. I had my earphones in in the grocery <laughs> store. Because you know, you just it's it's very rote and it's such wasted time and I and it and it makes it much more enjoyable to shop because I don't have my shopping buddy with me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm that weird person that just reads medical journals for <laughs> <laughs> scientific stuff. <laughs> that's awesome that's good great ideas you guys yeah thank you everybody <laughs> all right our next uh topic in the <laughs> broader topic of uh finding confidence sorry did anybody else have anything else you want to say okay um start with those that love you so it's really easy like if you're going to teach an essential oil class and you've never taught one before um teach the people that you love the people that will People that will, you know, you can practice on, you can make mistakes with, and, and they don't safe. care. <laughs> they're, they're still, they're still gonna love you. Um, yeah. So starting with those that love you, that's, that's the idea here. Yep. So yeah. most of us go to all our moms and our sisters, <laughs> and we're like, okay, look at this, all yours, and we say whatever we want to say with no structure, and they, they join us anyways. Okay, and that's what we do. And then we feel confident. Wait, look at this. That wasn't hard. <laughs> and, and you can even preface it to say, look, I, I want to teach these classes, um, essential oil classes, but I, I want to gain some confidence beforehand. Can I practice on you? And that will help, you know, if you preface it with that, you can teach, yeah. you know, your, your sisters, your fr best friends or whatever. And they'll they'll just nod their head and say yes to everything, yeah. <laughs> or maybe even give you advice and stuff. Mm -hmm. But once you've done it once, you'll see how easy it is. Yeah, you yeah. can even teach your children. Mm -hmm. They might not be the best students, but <laughs> at least you yeah. go through the material. And you'll <laughs> it's like no, they're not going to sit still. <laughs> Who were the first people that you taught? I taught Jason, and then I taught, uh, well, the kids just listened with him at dinner, like after dinner, and then and then I got some of my close friends that live here, um, because they knew that I was helping Jaden, they knew that my back was not hurting, and so I was like, well, oh, well, one of them has migraines, and Ethan had migraines, and we were using it for that, so she knew I wanted to practice. And she was interested, so she just came over, and I was like, I don't know how this is going to work, but it's just a, it's just a practice. But as you come and bring your neighbors or whatever, 
I will get better. And she was like, just tell me whatever you have to tell me. It doesn't matter. I don't know anything. So whatever you say is like, oh. <laughs> and then so it was good. And, um, and I was timing myself, you know, and she's like, I don't care about the time. And I was like, well, I want to make sure that for other people, we're not sitting here forever. So, um, so yeah, I did that. And then um, it was just, yeah, family and her over and over and my, another friend. And then, and then I just went and had this big class and that was it. <laughs> that got you really going. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? Who were the first people that you taught? I taught to like coworkers first and because like at start, I work at Starbucks, so they're around me all the time and they always called me patchouli anyways. So I'm like, I would be around there like, you need some of this. You're not working fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like give them that or if they had a sore throat or something like that I kind of like medicated them and yeah. talk to my mama those that are close to me so it kind of worked that way uh -huh. yeah. you want to say something yeah I was just gonna say at work because I would just put oils on people all the time I got a headache I'll oh, come here I'll fix you up <laughs> something else I got I'll fix you up <laughs> and it worked so they'd come back and say what was that stuff yeah, yeah. And then they have a good experience and someone tells them they've got a headache. Go and see Lucy. <laughs> yeah. And that builds your confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was so simple. It was a few things I knew to do yeah. and it was helping. So, yeah. Awesome. Anybody else want to share? The first classes I taught were with people I didn't really know that well because we had just moved. And so, you know, they were becoming my friends, but I didn't, I didn't know a lot about them or they didn't know a lot about me yet, but they were very supportive, so it was good. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. good. Yeah. See, you did something different. Um, instead of teaching the people that you love, you just teach the people that are there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was me. Sharing the love. Sharing the love. Sharing the love. For coming. Yeah. Um, and that's happened to us. Uh, we've moved to new places um, a few times. Yeah. And, you know, you don't know a lot of people, um, but you make friends like at at church or at the kids school or something like that and and you know it starts there and yeah yeah and i'm only now starting to teach more of my family which is fine <laughs> you didn't need to get nervous. Like. <laughs> <laughs> had to wait till they were ready. Some, sometimes your family are not the most accept accepting <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah how about you desiree so I first started with Eric's side of the family, but my mom introduced me, so I can't say that I really like introduced her. So she introduced me. So then I shared with Eric's side of the family, and then um, I started sharing them at work. And I would bring the diffuser in all the time when people are getting sick and diffusing on guard, and they would always come in and be like, "Oh, it smells so good in here." So yeah. Awesome. Well done. Oh, anybody else want to share? Okay. All right, we'll move on. All right, so we share with people that we love, but then we will start to open up and share with other people. And this is the time when people get a little bit nervous and they, they say, well, nobody else is interested or Jade, I'm not a good salesperson. And you know, I'm good, not good at selling. And you know, in their mind, they don't want people to look at them like Mr. Wormwood, right? <laughs> Everybody know that reference? Yes. Matilda. <laughs> From Matilda, uh -huh. Matilda's dad. Yeah. Used car salesman. So look, I had to, I struggled with that same thing too. Um, I was just sharing and then all of a sudden people were looking at me as if I'm a salesperson and then I thought, oh yeah, I am selling something. Because at first it was just like, let me help you with that. And then it, uh, it dawned on me, and I don't know, I'm kind of thick that way or something, but we, I had to learn how to remove the negative associations, and then I was, I was able to create the success. So what we need to do is just focus on serving others, right? You're not really selling like the conventional selling, um, but if you have a problem with that word, um, you know, one doctor said to me, I really would love to do this, um, and then she says, but I'm not a good salesperson. I don't think I can. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? You, 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 you just teach people. And I was trying to explain to her, and I, but I worked it out. I overcame it myself, but everybody else would have to overcome it um, in their own way, in their own time. 
So one thing that uh, I want to share with people is identify what um, that word means to you. Because sometimes the word salesperson means dishonest, cold, pushy, scheming, inconsiderate, and time waster, or desperate, or trickster. You know, those are things that came to my mind when I thought, oh, salespeople, well, that's what people might think of me. Um, so, you know, it's just not feeling like you're judging yourself. That's, that's one thing to do. But the other thing you can do is um, release all the negative associations. So I had to redefine the word sales. And I said, well, look, I can be honest and loving and meeting people's needs. I can give them the information they need. Um, you know, I can try to connect with people and give them the choice from the information I give them. So, it, guys, if you want to buy some essential oils, you can buy it this way or this way. Okay, that's not pushy. Right? And I, I release the control of um, the situation or the outcome. So, I'm not going to be, you know, sad if they say no. I'm not going to be sad if they say not now because that's not my job. My job is to present the message that there's hope and healing in these essential oils, and then I step back. If they choose it, great. If they don't, that's not my problem, okay? I, I did my best to share something that was valuable instead of holding it back because I was so fearful of what people might think of me, mm -hmm. right? So then I feel good that I've been guided by God and, you know, it doesn't matter, right? And, and in a way, no matter what your occupation is, we're, we're all salespeople. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, you're a salespeople. You have to sell broccoli to your children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to doing well in school to your children. That's you have to, right. And all of this is pointing out the benefits. You know, this is why you want to do well in school because it will do this and this and this for you. This is yeah. why you want to eat your vegetables because of this and this. Yeah. this. You're selling it to them. Yeah. Um, and even when you go searching for a job, you know, you write out a resume and you're selling yourself to prospective employers. Uh -huh. um, if you're employed, you're selling yourself your services to your employer. That's right. And you're saying, well, I did this, you know, when, when um, what is it, that time of year that comes around, they look at your performance um, and, they, and you say, well, I did this and this, this. No matter what, who we are, where we're from, we sell something. We all make a living by mm -hmm. selling something, if, yeah. even if we're not, you know, the stereotypical um, mm -hmm. plastic suit salesman. Yeah. So the best salespeople that I know are teachers, religious leaders, and doctors, um, because we sell education all the time. We've convinced children of um, this is how things are, and this is why you want to learn it. So as a teacher, I knew those skills and I didn't know that I could apply that to this, this you know, whatever it is I'm doing. And then when I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm just sharing information. I'm good at that. Then it just liberated me instead of going, oh, you know, this all does this for you and, you know, this is how you buy it and get so nervous. No, not at all anymore because you're selling information. This is what this one does and this is what this one does. It's up to you. This is how you buy it. You can buy it retail or wholesale. And if you want to buy it wholesale, you have a wholesale membership. And this is how you join. This is with the form you fill in. You know, these are the promotions this month. That's it. And then they and, get to choose. And you can simply ask them, you know what? Um, would you like me to help you set up your membership now? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not like you're you're pushing it or but you're no. you're giving you're making the invitation. Yeah. It's not just about Oh, I'm glad we've had a lovely class. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Goodbye. Because <laughs> yeah. you can have a class of 16 people, and if you don't invite yeah. them, yeah. To, you you got to believe that you know what you're teaching them about. Your, it's something valuable. It's something valuable, and they got to accept it and use it in their lives. So mm -hmm. there's got to be some form of invitation in there. Now, doctors and nurses. I know we have a few nurses. Yeah. Um, you sell your services anyways, and you get paid for helping people. <clears throat> Sometimes people have a, a thing against, you know, helping people and then getting paid for it because somehow, you know, you're getting, taking money from your friends and it just doesn't feel right. Um, you know, if people, if you're a doctor and people rock up to your office, they still, they have to pay, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you, you're showing them that you love them and have concern for them. There's no difference in this business. You love people, you have concern for them, you present what they need. Um, but I don't own people's um, money problems. If people tell me their money problems, I don't feel the responsibility um, to fix it. 
So, and don't make decisions yeah, because you, for them. You know, they, they don't come to the doctor and say, look, I can't afford your services, but I really want you to help me anyways. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. They don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do it. And you don't allow people to do that to you. So you can say, that's all right. You know, whenever you want to, I'm just telling you this information. But they have to want to heal. And if they see the value in it, I, I met people that I think, oh, you know, that person, I don't think they can afford it. But I'm just going to say it anyways because I, that's not my job to decide whether they can afford it or not. How can I judge them? So I present and sometimes they surprise me, really surprise me. I've had, you know, people buy the every oil kit, you know, the $500 kits. And that is huge for those people. But I think that they, they just want they to get over it. They see a lot of value. They just yeah. want to get over whatever they, they have. They're like, we just want to be well. And they'll find a way. So that, I don't think, oh, that person's rich. I'm going to sell to that person. Okay, that's not even the, the consideration. Here's a person that's equal to everybody else. And if you continue seeing things that way, it makes it so easy. Okay, it's so easy to um, share the oils. Alrighty, so you're a loving and honest person. You're sharing information um, and you are just meeting their needs. And just ask God, be guided by God, um, and just be confident that you and him are partners to help this person in whatever it is that they're in need of. Okay. Um, anybody have a fear of the word sales here? Um, any more? Do we need to talk about it anymore? Or? No. I think that it's... Sorry. <laughs> I'm... I'm been comfortable with the word teaching but then I'm also concerned that well what if I'm so comfortable with teaching other people about it but then I'm scared to go ahead and like push a sale you know what I mean so like yeah I can teach you and I can tell you all this information but to really go ahead and make that sale I think that's where like my problem lies I like Ben's question your, your question, Ben, is would you like me to help you set up a wholesale membership? Mm-hmm. Because you believe that it will help them and you want to yeah. help them and you don't want them to leave there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some yeah. people have a problem and they, or they procrastinate and you say, you know what, do you want me to help you set up a wholesale membership tonight? Mm-hmm. If yeah. you do, I actually have this um, gift bag to give to you. Take them tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. if you close, you need to check with yourself and see, am I worried about what people think of me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's like, oh, what if they think I'm pushy? Mm-hmm. Or take their money or something. Yep. And I think mm-hmm. it, does, it does relate up to the first point that we made. Um, you know, focus on the what's good for those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes think of it like your, your relationship that you have with your child. <laughs> we sell things our children yeah see i didn't use that as an example because some parents guilt their children into it right mm-hmm. but like yeah. teachers they'll say this is the reason these are the reasons That's <laughs> you want that a good parent <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we don't want to manipulate your um people yeah but you know if you could just all selling is is pointing out the benefits and then invite <laughs> people and, and I, I do like the, uh, do you want me to help you set up your membership yeah. tonight? Yeah. And you know, if those pe- if there are people that um, budget or whatever, so far, whoever did sign up, they said, I want to sign up now, but I can't, I can't until next month. And I was kind of worried, but they actually did. And then uh, Erica came to the class with me. And I actually didn't tell her about the wholesale. I don't even think she knows right now about it. I haven't had, we went Saturday and then I asked her like, um, after about it. And then she told me she really enjoyed it and she wanted to do the cleanse. And then I said, well, you can get that that kit, um, with the wholesale membership. And she said, okay, I'll sign up tomorrow. And I wasn't even, I was in a different state. I just knew that when we were at the, massage stuff she had questions we shared information about what i've used what she's used she heard you guys and she was like i need this and then i said okay and then today i just messaged her and said i know you signed up i'm not sure if you want to do this as a business but i know that jade has helped people make significant income and that's what i'm gonna work that's what i'm working on and she has really helped me teach other people 
And so I'm going to replace my income. And then after I'm going to replace Jason so that he can get out of real estate. And she was like, I want to do it. What time do I log in? And where's the link? And I said, it's the same zoom link and I'll send it to you again tonight. So like, that was Saturday, and this has not been a week. And that's not and really selling. I feel. You're not pushing. You're saying this no. is going for me. And but I think of my friends, and I'm thinking, if you really understood the benefit, I I think you'd love it too. Right. And so I had a friend. She said, "Whatever it is that you're selling," because I was telling her the benefits, and she she just stopped me halfway. Whatever you're selling, I'm in. <laughs> well, okay. That was quick. Yeah. But. <laughs> do because you have that so much love and you think if I'm gonna choose my business partners I want to choose yeah. that I love that I want to be with all the time okay. why, why not okay can I, can I also give you a, a, um, a ratio um, if you are teaching a class if you are giving some value to other people and you're, you're, you're giving 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 um, you give like nine, ten, nine tenths of you giving value to them. So you have this long class and everything. They, it's kind of accepted in our society that you can make a, you can make an offer to them. You know, and I would say the ratio is like one tenth. Um, you know, you give all this free information. You teach them about this class and everything. They, uh, it's almost expected. Um, and I can tell you that you know. You come there, they know that they're coming to a class, they know that there's things to buy, and they, they kind of, you know, they, they are just aware of in our society. Um, and even if he said it's a free class, we know that means, um, you know, if you get a free app, there's going to be some ads on the bottom or something. There's something, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So people will understand, and, and they will, um, if you, you've given them true value, They'll give you a, a minute of their time to listen to. They want to, to reciprocate. Yeah. And yeah. you say, um, look at, um, this is the membership. This is how you set it up. Um, I'd like to invite you guys to open a membership mm -hmm. site. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. That's really all you need to mm -hmm. do. And we yeah. are afraid of people that are negative. We're afraid of people that are scary, right? Um, and guess what? If you understand that you don't need to sign them up, <laughs> that you don't need to work with them, once you've identified them, you want to weed them out um, because they will be poison to you and your life and your business. So if you identify them, then, then you, there's no need to push because the right people will come and the wrong people will be weeded out. Uh, so if you try to manipulate things a little bit and force it, then you might end up with some of these negative poisonous people that um, are not fun to work with. Yep. Yeah. And, and sometimes the things that you're afraid of, you know, sometimes we are afraid of um, closing the cell. You know, we are afraid of making that invitation saying, would you like me to help you set, the, set your membership up tonight? Um, sometimes we're afraid of that because we're afraid of them saying no. <laughs> <laughs> and we feel like that's a rejection, but they're not rejecting you. Uh, They've accepted you. They're just saying, I'm not ready for yeah. that right now. Right. And that's okay. And you just make sure they leave with a sample. That's it. <laughs> not enough experience. Not on that stuff. <laughs> it's true because, you know, if someone's not ready, they'll eventually come around and they will remember yeah. the value that you gave them and they'll come back to you. Yeah. Don't burn that bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. I've met people that come to classes and they will say, I am skeptical. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. You know, and then I accept them and not reject them. And suddenly at the end, they're already feeling in the fall to go. Because, you know, I don't know. All their friends have joined and they look around and everyone's okay. No one's dead yet. Or, you know, then, <laughs> okay, I'll join too. Yeah. Or we have, I've, I've had ladies bring me their husbands saying, my husband is skeptical. Here. And I say like, good, I, my I, husband. I, I understand. You know, I, sometimes a guy because his job is in the house to protect the family's fortunes and to be skeptical. And some, you know, guys do a really good job of that. And, and then that was it. Skepticism dropped. <laughs> like, yeah, like, this guy understands me. And I said, this is how I see it. Um, then he, you know, saw things the way I see it and I see this the way things, yeah. he sees it, so. Yeah, it's, it's so liberating after you overcome. Are we overcome on the last? Okay, there's two, last. two more. Yeah. Um, Bits of information here. So Sorry, you have overcome, a good discussion. Yeah, overcome a lot of that fear, and you you say that, and you share that membership with people. 
people. It's like, now I can share with anybody, but you just have to kind of let yourself, but imagine yourself um, before the class happens, imagine that you're, you're signing people up, imagine you saying that. And if you have a problem with that, just keep rep repeating it until it's like a natural thing. Hey, let me help you set up your membership. Would you like me to help you set up your membership? And practice that until it just flows. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's our next topic here. Practice. Yes, practice, practice. Um, we have uh, some people come up to me and say, I'm not confident. I can't teach a class. I'm not confident. And I laugh because I'm like, that's like how you get confident <laughs> to just teach. Um, yeah. Was, uh, what was that? I, yeah. I forget the guy who said it, but he said, to accel accelerate your rate of success, you need to accelerate your rate of failure. So don't be scared to go out there and fail because you'll have a few classes that are bombed. Oh, yeah. You'll have, you know, people. Where there's just one person there and you'll have those classes where no one enrolls mm -hmm. good yep the more yeah. you have of those the more you'll have of the yeah. it's just the so, ratios game so our youngest uh, presidential diamond in doTERRA is a lady named jesse remus she's 25 or something and she said that she, once she drove eight hours to one class and that nobody showed up and she cried all the way back and so, but she said the next day she got up and she oiled herself up and she said all her affirmations and she went out again. You know, that's awesome. Instead of letting that self doubt and self criticism beat you down, you know, get up and do it again. And you know, imagine leaving your children, driving eight hours and then coming home again, you know, with nothing. <laughs> and her car is, you know, was a bomb and it kept breaking down. And so, oh, you know, I felt like, yeah, she can do it. Anybody, right? The confidence comes from doing. And I tell people, just teach 25 classes, introductory classes, and then come back and tell me if you're not confident by then. Right? If you haven't taught that those 25 classes, don't complain to me that you're not confident. Of course, we were not confident. And I like um, here Justin Harrison. He says, you know, practice makes permanent. You know, you, you get so good at it, it's permanent. Um, it's not perfect because we really need to let go of perfection. You're never going to be perfect at any class. Every class you look back and say, oh, I could have done this better. Okay, and that's fine. All right, that's part of our learning. Uh, Louise Hay, she says that she never lets herself have critical thoughts after or scolding, self-scolding after any presentation. You know, because blaming herself for something, blaming is, you know, for not doing a good job takes away your power. And you need your power to continue making changes. Amazing. So that's really good. We're not going to beat ourselves up and blame, you know, our lack of whatever. Because it doesn't help. And so and it takes away our power. And, you know, we need that power to continue to make changes. So after every class, I say, I get better and better at this business each day. So I have some affirmations for you guys here. You can say, it gets easier every time. Or my confidence grows each time I practice and it is safe for me to make mistakes right and that really helps you know just let yourself go and practice um, essential oils for that is forgive console and motivate so before class you lather yourself up when you come there as a walking diffuser <laughs> <laughs> The last topic we wanted to talk about um, in the you know the area of gaining confidence is to make sure that you're in an instructional level. You got to get a little bit outside of your comfort zone to grow a bit. Um, and Jade's drawn on this analogy that she learned from her days of teaching. You know, you, you know, want to make sure your students are not re always reading the picture books because they're not going to learn anything. But you don't want to push them straight into deep Shakespeare because they're just going to be frustrated they won't be able to get through two lines without pulling their hair out so you want to make sure that they're in that instructional zone where it's just hard enough um presents a bit of a challenge but they're they're learning as they're going and that's what you need to do with your own um your own comfort as well um push yourself outside the comfort zone you've already taught your friends and family all the people that was easy around you <laughs> so push yourself a little bit more 
Um, ask those people for referrals, and then you're teaching people you've never met before. You're showing up at a class, and nine out of the ten people there you don't know. And you, you, you'll have to go out there and greet them at the door. Say, hi, my name is this. Um, um, what's your name? And where you come from? And have you heard about essential oil? You know, you'll have to just get outside of your comfort zone a little bit. And that's when you're learning. That's where you're gaining more confidence um, as, as you learn and as you conquer new situa situations and new territory. But you don't want to just jump into the um, frustration level and, you know, schedule a, a spot on um, radio thing or <laughs> sign up to teach a university level class because that might just be a bad experience for you. So. Yeah, so I, when I was in Ohio, actually, um, I just taught whoever, whatever, and sometimes I only had one person turn up. But at the end of the two and a half years we were there, um, I had a class of 70 people, seven zero. And um, I was just in the zone because <laughs> I felt so comfortable. But had I, like somebody told me, you know, that you'll be teaching a class of 70 people, you know, I'd pee my pants. You know, I just, no, I can't do that. <laughs> But, you know, you, you build up to it and that comfort zone gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Until now we have doTERRA our meetings. You know, we had a meeting down here right before I left. We had two, three hundred people there. And I had no fluttery butterflies, nervousness. I just rocked up, walked up there and, and talked. But, whoa, was that a difference to how I was? You know, I couldn't even, you know, sleep at night when I knew that tomorrow morning I'll be teaching a couple of people. You know, I had to pay my nails and, and iron my clothes and make sure everything was perfect. <laughs> no, it's like, all right, it's so good. It's so good to just put, keep pushing yourself just right outside that comfort zone. It doesn't have to be really too far because otherwise you'll give up. And that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of that frustration. But you never need to go out to that level at all. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Is that helpful? Fantastic. Any questions or comments? We've, we've gone a little bit over our time. Actually, I think we eight started minutes. about um, eight minutes after yeah. the hour, so about an hour worth of stuff. Any questions, comments, anything that anybody wants to add to this? I'm going to stop sharing this here. Fantastic. Good. Looks like everybody loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, any takeaways, uh, what you guys thought was most instructional? Mm -hmm. That you might be applying in your situation. Because if none of this that we've talked about is applied, I'm sorry, yeah. it was really great to spend time with you, but. <laughs> I like the oils that you suggested. Mm -hmm. Like to go with the different things that we're facing when you're planning to get better or when you're nervous on the way there or I, I like that. I, like, I mean, you're using it to go teach and you're using it to call me to go teach. Like, it's just, it's just funny. And um, I also like, uh, I like where you wrote down, you'll never have a perfect presentation because when I taught the biggest class, like the class of 10 or whatever it was, um I like left like people were leaving and I was like oh I forgot to tell them this and I was like well oh well they got what they needed to <laughs> I, was like, I was like it's okay I did all right next time I'll remember to add that in but I like that you put that you'll never have a perfect presentation to just let that go because it really doesn't matter the gist is just sharing it and letting them experience it and giving them the hope that they'll be able to fix whatever ailment and get better so yeah. Like I went to teach an intro to essential oils class and I didn't bring any <laughs> essential oil. <laughs> <laughs> like, bye, honey. I'm like, good luck. And he came home and like, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> <That was cool. laughs> Did anyone sign up? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but the second time, That's two right. people did. Yeah. That was good yeah. <laughs> I think Catherine had something to say. Oh, I'm just grateful for all the tips, and I really like how you suggested the oils as well um, for each feeling. And um, I just took a lot of notes, and um, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Catherine. I think if we had anything to sum, sum it up, um, I'll you know, go back to those six points. Focus on others. Um, just mm -hmm. teach what you know. You can build on that knowledge. Um, start with those that love you. You know, practice and get outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That's everything in a, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Keep teaching. 25 classes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> yeah. I like that. Practice makes permanent. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the practice doing, because we can have a, a strong belief in something. We can, we can love this company. We can love the oils. But until we act on that faith and that belief, it's not going to happen. You know, things won't take off. Our business won't take off. We won't share. So, you know, that's the part that um, we have to practice every day is the doing part, the acting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Remember our topic is confidence and by acting, you'll be able to build up. Yeah. I think my biggest um, trouble is when I first, the topic comes up, just knowing like, the first like paragraph of how to word it without over like feeling over overwhelmed or making them uncomfortable mm. does anyone have um I, I i felt that way as well when the um, essential I, oil topic comes yeah. up you're like ah yeah yeah I'm, I'm just scripting it out actually writing it out beforehand and having that conversation with myself <laughs> before it actually arises and you know right. I've written out several times so ben know. what's this oil about well ben <laughs> is, you know what i'm going to say if this situation arises yeah. is there anywhere we can look at different um ideas of like scripts <laughs> yeah actually um there there are some on the um I'll, let me bring it up well <laughs> The chair has a lot of really good ideas too. I know I favorited a lot of, um, you can just type in classes A to Z on doTERRA's website and they have like some sassy classes and they'll outline it for you and kind of give you ideas. But my biggest takeaway too from like this is just like to simplify it because we all like have personal experiences with it and I am very like, I'm like Jade, like I love learning and like all the knowledge and I could sit here and tell you the chemistry of like all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. They're just like good things and like they're a resource God has given us to like heal ourselves. So there's like nothing really to be nervous about when you're focused on, when you're not focused on yourself. I don't know. So that was my takeaway. Okay. And you said that was on classes A to Z on doTERRA? Yeah, go to like doTERRA.com and like classes A to Z. They have like all kinds of ideas. Um, so they have the notes for the PowerPoints, right? Yeah, yeah, they have like everything like and even they have forms that you can look up that you can hand out. But I just went to like my little group that I have on Facebook. And I was like, Hey, here's some ideas for classes. I'm gonna have one Thursday. Like, what do you guys want? And everybody wanted to learn more about Slim and Sassy. So it's January. Mm. So. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm going to share with you. Um, this is at jadebalden.com. You can go to business training. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. just business training I'll, I'll show mm -hmm. you uh, under me jade uh, build a jade business training this page <laughs> there there's some videos and this the share discussion is what you're interested in so there's this whole video talks about that and to go along with that there's these um, downloads you can go to this downloads page and there's a booklet called share share <laughs> essential oils Oh, great. Thank you. A while ago, um, but it has this, and this is what, you, this is what you're asking for, um, how to make a conversation. Mm -hmm. There's a video that goes through this. I've just discovered these amazing essential oils. I'm really excited to use them. Okay. There's a few uh, um, scripts in here. Okay. And there's a few examples in that um, video that goes along with it. That would be the video so all the videos at the bottom here oh where the videos go oh that's the download that page nice. yeah that was on the previous page at the bottom <laughs> of the business page Here the Share discussion. Discussion. Yeah. yeah yeah i um before i went to florida i knew that i was going to teach class and talk to some people so i watched a couple of their videos i watched one where was it 
it's either Jade showing Ben or Ben showing Jade and they're pretending like they don't know. I watched that one because it gave me some funny ideas, like so, just a different way to put it or whatever. But mm -hmm. the, I watched like three or four of them. And then on the, I was already in Florida and on the way to the meeting, I was practicing in my head like, you know, these are the ways to use them. This is my, or this is my story. Keep it to this many minutes. And I was tying myself in the car and then here's the ways that we use them. Here, smell this, which ones I wanted them to smell. I just practiced it like two or three times because it was a it was an hour drive. So I, was, I just practiced it and then I got there and was like, okay, let it all go. I just practiced that. And so I just um, watched the training videos right before, like the days before I went that they have on jadeballin.com uh, Jade and that yeah. helped. There's an <laughs> example. That <laughs> yeah. Teaching each other. Um, it's silly. Yeah. There's oh, great. Video. Um, they're 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 older videos, but they they say things. Yeah, I, just, I would pick a couple of things to say and practice, and that's it. Don't get too many ideas, and then you, you have a repertoire of things to say, and then you don't know which one to pick at the time. So that's, right. Yeah, might be a, a problem too. Just pick a couple, stick with those, and then and then build on it as you get better at it. I kept that five finger thing too, and I was like, Yeah, that's good. That's good. And there's a lot of information, so just take a little bit at a time. Maybe uh, cut out some time in your schedule and say, "I'm going to do this much each day," and it'll it'll be edible, like getting a. Or the class in a box. I got the class in a box, and it has a little pamphlet, and it kind of walks you through the steps. So if you get lost or people get you off track and they're talking, you could be like, "Well, the next step is," and everybody looks at their paper, and you're like, "Yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about how you." ingest it okay so blah, blah you know they know what you're going to go over so it kind of like helped everybody focus and then at the bot at the back of it is the sign up sheet so i think a lot of people um you know they're concerned with uh how do you get to the uh, class in the first place how do you bring it up in conversation with your friends and stuff and i think that probably comes down to just you know not share it with them just Forget about the cell part and just say, you've got a cough, here's something you can try. <laughs> and then follow up later. Yeah. So we have um, a few people that heard. Um, Maha, did you guys want to say anything? We're happy to have spectators. You don't have yeah, to say You don't anything. have to. <laughs> I just I wanted to let you know that you can. All right, we appreciate everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you all for participating and, and sharing with us your ideas and stories and your experiences as well. I think it makes it very valuable. Um, I'm going to go up, we're going to go ahead and, and tie this up tonight. Um, and I hope everybody has picked out something valuable to take away and apply. So, yeah, thanks.